Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning is the epistle lesson, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 10, and we read in Jesus' name. So then, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Indeed, what the law was unable to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did when he sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin. God condemned sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the law would be fully satisfied in us who are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. To be sure, those who are in harmony with the sinful flesh think about things the way the sinful flesh does. And those in harmony with the Spirit think about things the way the Spirit does. Now the way the sinful flesh thinks results in death. But the way the Spirit thinks results in life and peace. For the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, since it does not submit to God's law, and in fact, it cannot. Those who are in the sinful flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the sinful flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed God's Spirit lives in you. And if someone does not have the Spirit of Christ, that person does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. These are the words of our text. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered once again to hear your holy word and to be strengthened in our faith through it. Pour out your spirit upon us, dispel our doubts and fears, And once again, reassure us that Jesus is our Savior from sin. To these ends, sanctify us through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Jesus the Christ, dear fellow redeemed. Pastor once told me an experience he had at the deathbed of a woman passing of time has made some of the details a little blurry for me, and some of them are, that I'll recount are by implication rather than his explicit statements. But anyway, he was at the deathbed of his member, death was soon approaching, and she was terrified of death. She was just overwhelmed with guilt. If I understand it correctly, she had been raised in the church. She had lived all her life as a member of the church. But there was something she had done. On her deathbed, that one sin plagued her. She could imagine that God could forgive all of her other sins, just not that one. And so as her pastor is talking to her, trying to comfort her, her guilt was just overwhelming. Her sin seemed so great. And Jesus, too small. The pastor told me that he shared many comforting Bible verses with her, like John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. She wouldn't take heart. I know he shared also with her 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19. For God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them. Verse after verse, this woman would not be comforted. Finally, he shared with her Romans 8, verse 1. 
there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when she heard that word, those words of no condemnation, she took heart and believed. She realized that Jesus was a greater Savior than she was a sinner. That her sin was not so great that Jesus was greater still. And so as we meditate upon these words before us, we take up that theme. Jesus is a greater Savior than you are a sinner. The mindset of the sinful flesh results in death. There was a war going on in that hospital that day. A war within that woman and a war over that woman. Maybe you've felt that warfare in you too. That warfare within and without. Paul throughout this section speaks of our mindset. And he really presents two ways of thinking. One according to the sinful flesh and one according to the spirit. And most of the time in this section when he speaks about spirit, he's speaking about our spirit, the new man that God has created in us by faith. And so our spirit and our sinful flesh are often at odds with each other and at war with each other. Maybe you've sensed that in yourself. That there are two competing voices inside of you. Two competing wills. One that would have you do one thing and one that would have you to do the very opposite. One to do what is evil and one to do what is good. As we think about that mindset of the sinful flesh, Paul tells us that it doesn't submit to God's will, that it's hostile to God, and in fact it cannot even submit to God's will. It is totally opposed to God. Whatever God says, it's going to do the opposite. Now, we could talk about the, the desires of the sinful flesh. We could talk about the sinful lusts that we have with regards to sexuality, with regards to our anger and resentment, many of those things. But today I want to talk to you about your mindset, how you think about your earthly life and your relationship with God. And I could summarize or very pointedly come to the, the issue with the question, do you have a warfare mindset? I don't know about you, but I've read quite a few examples or stories from Ukraine where nationals who weren't in the military have volunteered to fight for their country. And they're, they're willing to risk their very lives to try and save their nation. They definitely have a warfare mindset. There is one goal and everything must be poured into the pursuit of that one goal, the protection of their nation. How would we translate that mindset to you and to the church? We are at war. And the fight is within and without. 
if you don't have a sense of that warfare that is raging within you and without of you, outside of you, you need to wake up. Because that battle is real. And it's also over you. You are the prize. If you were to adopt a spiritual warfare mindset, how would that change the way that you view the decisions that you make every day? How would that change your priorities? How would it change the way that you spend your money? Or maybe I should say, use your money. How would it change how you treat your spouse and your children? Because the battle is for them too. And this isn't just a battle that the, the church fabricates as if it's, it's just a fairy tale. This battle is not only real, but the consequences are eternal. This battle is over your soul and the souls of mankind. We really have an enemy Satan, who prowls around like a roaring lion. He wants nothing more than to devour you. He wants to lure you away into shameful sin and vice. He'll use your sinful flesh. He'll use all of your weaknesses to fight against you. And then there's your own sinful nature that enemy within that does not want your best. And that, that's a hard thing to grapple with, right? That there would be a part of us, a part of our very selves that does not want what is truly best for us. Often it is way too short-sighted. It looks only for the here and now, only for the pleasures that this flesh can enjoy. It doesn't see the eternal, or if it does, it doesn't care about them. And so it tempts you to enjoy life now, to put yourself first, to get what you want out of this life, regardless of the cost eternally. And yet Paul clearly tells us that those who are in the mindset of their sinful flesh go to death. That's where the mindset of the sinful flesh leads. And if you don't think that the moments, the choices that you make in the moment will have long-term effects. Just think about that woman I told you on the deathbed. It was that one decision that she made, whatever it was, pastor didn't tell me. That one decision that she made caused her to think that death was hers eternally. Those decisions that you make every day, they're important decisions. So what is your mindset as you make them? We are at war. So let's think as if we are at war. Because it is a matter of life and death eternal life and death. But Paul tells us something incredible in our text. 
when he says that the, those who are in Christ, for those who are in Christ, the spirit of the, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. Because of our sins, we deserve death. The wages of sin is death. But Paul reveals that Christ has done something incredible so that now all who are in him have been set free from the law of sin and death. Now, how can that happen? Paul also tells us that God condemned sin in Jesus' flesh. What we couldn't do according to the weakness of our sinful nature, God did in Christ. And God sent Christ to bear our sins in his flesh so that he could condemn sin in our flesh. That idea of condemn, condemnation is judgment. What Paul is telling us, what God is telling us through Paul's words, is that in the flesh of Christ, our sins were judged. So God transferred all of our guilt to Jesus. And he made Jesus suffer and die in judgment of our sins. So that the full payment, the full expectations and demands of the law have been fully satisfied by Jesus. often will point to Jesus' words on the cross, or, yeah, words from the cross, at least in English, where he says, it is finished. In Greek, it's one word. Okay. With that one word in Greek, Jesus was telling us that our sins, as great as they may be, and as damning as they may be, have been fully satisfied, fully condemned in his body. He was telling us that he is a greater savior than we are sinners. And so if you were on your deathbed, is there one sin? Are there a handful of sins that, that come to your mind when you think of your great guilt. Whatever those sins are, God says that he has transferred them to Jesus. And in your mind, you should do the very same thing. Whatever that sin is, visually nail it to the cross because that is where it is. Because God has moved it there. So that that sin, those sins, all of your sins are condemned in Jesus. And you now are set free. You are forgiven free to go. You're free to live a new life. In the last verse of our text, Paul tells us that, but if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. For if Christ is in you, if you believe that Jesus lived and died for you, then Jesus is inside of you. He, he dwells in you. Now, who is Jesus? 
He's not just our dead Lord. He's not just the Lord that hung on the cross and in whose flesh our sins were condemned. He's also the one who rose from the dead. And Jesus' resurrection not only proves that your sins are forgiven, Jesus' resurrection gives you new life. The living God, the living Lord, the living Savior lives inside of you. And he's your power source. He's the one that has regenerated your spirit, given you a new mindset, given you new eyes to see the world, new eyes to see yourself with Christ in you. Yes, this body may be dead to sin, but you're alive to righteousness. God wants you to see yourself as one he has declared forgiven, one he has declared not guilty, one over whom he has said there is now no condemnation. That is the way God wants you to see yourself. Because that is the way that he sees you. And so when you look into the mirror of the law and you see your sins, God doesn't want your eyes to stay there. He wants your eyes on Jesus. Because no matter what that mirror of the law shows you, no matter how ugly the picture is, no matter how great the sins are, Jesus is a greater Savior than you are a sinner. So your sins are forgiven. God loves you. Heaven is yours. It has been my privilege for almost 11 years now to continually point you to Jesus the Savior. That work will continue from this pulpit. Pastor Molstad and whoever serves you in the future will continue to point you to all that Jesus has done so that your sins are forgiven. So each and every day you can live with that knowledge that Jesus is a greater Savior than you are a sinner. May God grant you His Spirit so that you take that to heart and live with that mindset until you're finally with God in heaven. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.